let's get back into like sort of like the structure of, of things, yeah. you, you know, between your trainings and the engagement, the coaching engagements. I'm curious to know, like maybe in the, in the last couple of months or last couple of years, what kind of changes have you, have you made or things that you've learned about how you, you deliver your services yes. that, that have been like, you know, maybe turning points and, 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 you know, things really started to work out well or, or like, you know, just a lot smoother once you made these changes in your approach. Yeah, thanks. Like I, I think um, uh, the, a combination of both synchronous and asynchronous has become a mm -hmm. lot more apparent to me, um, right? Because from a training perspective, I was always doing things synchronously and I found ways to do it a little bit more asynchronously. But I think the the interesting concept that has come up um, is, is that when I was coaching people a couple years ago, I was often traveling to their their site. Uh, sometimes I was here within the state. Sometimes that was, you know, a plane flight away. And so I I'm kind of captive, right? I I am I'm there. I'm you know here for maybe some meetings. I'm here for other times. And I always kind of felt like, how is that being used most appropriately by my clients? Um, and because I don't just want to walk in and say, well, I've got nothing to do, so I'm just gonna you know sit in on your meeting and start speaking out of turn, that doesn't help, mm -hmm. right? Um, maybe it does, but I didn't feel like it helped. Um, so I often felt like I was not always getting the most use out of the time. Um, so I'd start doing more asynchronous kind of things. So usually it was just email at the time, right? Um, so what can we do in that kind of way? Um, we're sending documents back and forth to each other with some comments. And so, but there, there is a coaching aspect that comes along into that of, I don't have a lot of time. It takes a while to read and consume these things. Um, so let me go and put that out and then see what, how that sits with somebody. Sometimes it takes them a day or two to figure it out and then they come back, but you know, the ball is kind of back in their court. And when you're doing yep. coaching, that's really powerful. And, um, going virtual that I've felt even more of that, right? Cause to sit in on somebody else's meeting in their company for two hours virtually, um, you know, do I, do I interrupt and take over everyone's mm -hmm. time? you know, how much do I just consume and report back later? And sometimes it's really valuable, right? If, if the structure is focused on, Hey, we're here to leverage rich and some of his, um, understanding of what he, he sees, uh, based off of what's going on around us or to leverage his expertise, do that. But then the rest of it is, it's better when it's kind of ad hoc because then people can go and do their work. And when they see the issue come up, right. You know, and I, we yeah. respond in time. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's, I, I can imagine that it's so um, dependent on, so if you're doing a live session, especially in person mm -hmm. on site, it's so dependent on kind of what's going on that day. And, you know, maybe the, the stakeholders involved, they, they might be having a great day. They might be having an off day. You know, you don't like, um, are they, are they busy? Is their mind somewhere else? Um, whereas with asynchronous, it, you know what I, I I keep trying to verbalize this in different ways, but I of course it's more convenient. You can deal with time zones, you can have more space. But to me, it's more about the freedom and the space to consume and think and research and prepare your next response. Yeah, right. Um, so it, it, it there's the convenience factor, but it's also like, you know, Rich just sent me this thing. I'm gonna kind of think on it, and maybe take a walk, maybe come back to him tomorrow once I have something really useful to come back to, or as you said, um, maybe putting it into practice in real time, like yeah. let's, let's wait out the week and see when a situation like this bubbles up. And then that's, that's a moment to kind of capture or, or communicate around. Right. That, that last part I think is really cool. And actually it's, it's what I've been spending, I'd say more of my time than less over the past three years doing, um, I was trying to help scum to org establish a program in late 2018, 2019. And then we started really going into it in earnest in 2020 uh, about like, could we validate the working proficiency of scrum masters that we didn't actually work with? Right? Cause there's scrum master or scrum.org has a lot of assessment based certifications, knowledge type things of um, how would you answer these questions that tells us that, you know, enough about scrum to be able to, you know, be a, a pretty competent scrum master, but how have you done it is a totally different thing. And we mm -hmm. started with a lot of synchronous discussions, right? Of just um, asking questions, 
trying to see what they're doing, learning more about it, kind of getting a sense for, yeah, you seem pretty good here, but I'm not so sure. So let me, let me ask you some things to go do to prove to me that the things I thought you were good at, you're actually good at. And then I need to expose a little bit more. So let me give you a couple of things I want you to do to, to kind of tease out. Do I have the right opinion, you know, the right opinion here, or can we help you grow there? Um, and what became clear over time is sort of that almost like a front loading of an asynchronous conversation that let's have a synchronous conversation to say, to talk about outcomes and where we might want to go in a relationship mm -hmm. and then say, Hey, I think here's like four things that you should consider looking at and working on when the time's right. Right. Yep. And so it, it's not even so much of a, that constant delay response, but it's really a, here's something for you for that when you're ready and you come back to it, like you just said, let's see, let's get our team to go through this for the week and then come back and say, Oh wow. Yeah, actually this really helped. And, but you need to reflect it with somebody, right? You need to get that, that feedback loop closed to say, did I, did I really see that this was as good as it was? And telling that story then back to a coach, right? Uh, so that they can help right. you see more in that story is immensely valuable for like that deeper level of growth. Yeah. And, and also kind of like getting it when it's fresh, right? Like this just yeah. happened this morning. Let me, let me tell you about it rather than trying to remember back something that might've happened weeks ago. And yeah. For like the next live coaching session kind of thing. It's like, no, 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 no. Just, just tell me now, record yourself, mm -hmm. right? Write it down, whatever it needs to be, just so you've got that kind of the evidence captured of what yeah. happened and you're ready to go and, and build upon that evidence in the future. Hey, just a quick break to tell you about clarity flow. It's the software tool loved by coaches and their clients for communicating asynchronously in threaded conversations using video, audio, or text. My team and I designed Clarity Flow for the modern day coach. It lets you give clients a single place to engage with you and all that you offer through your coaching business. Run coaching groups, cohorts, and communities using our spaces feature. Create interactive courses using our programs feature. Build your coaching library with templates and reusable content and sell access to your coaching programs with subscriptions or one-time payments. Customize colors and connect to your domain to give clients a fully branded experience. You can use Clarity Flow on the web or our mobile apps for iPhone, iPad, or Android and connect any other apps using our Zapier integration. Start with a free trial or request a personalized demo and consultation by going to clarityflow.com. And then the other side of the coin, of course, is, is you, right? Like, how are you managing your time? And how, like, how has that changed? As, as, you, as you mentioned, like, you've, recent years, you've obviously moved to a lot more virtual. Yeah. Um, and this move toward uh, kind of a, a hybrid between the, the sync, the live calls, and the asynchronous stuff. What does that look like on your end? How are you receiving messages in your inbox? How do you uh, manage your day and your time? Because um, I, I think that's another thing from a lot of coaches who are sort of new to the idea of incorporating asynchronous aspects into their into their practice. It can seem like, well, now you're opening yourself up to just a barrage of requests and messages. And um, how do you sort of manage that? Um, I'm, I'll admit I'm still getting better at it. <laughs> uh, but I, I think... Um, what's helped me honestly, just being independent from the past seven years, I have learned how to manage my time, right? How my time is my time. And, and that's a really important thing to me. Um, and I think that that maybe looks different for, like I said, some new coaches, um, or, or internal coaches, uh, if you're doing work mm -hmm. inside of an organization and, and you are like a full-time job kind of thing, but even then, are, are you, are you really doing like work with other people full-time or are you sometimes reading? trying to, to gather, you know, new information for yourself that might help you uh, or go to workshops, you know, to help you uh, work with others. So, so I do a little bit of that every week, right? I'm, I'm reading various articles. I'm going through books that I've read before just to get a new sense of context. Um, I'm trying to go to different workshops, uh, but from the, the flow, the incoming flow, um, something that I've experimented with uh, is, is not just respond immediately, Right, because um, it is asynchronous, right? And the world expects instant gratification on a lot of things, and I try to temper that <laughs> readily by saying, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, by either giving a, like a service level expectation to say, hey, you know, about eighty percent of the time I respond within two days, right? So, yeah. but sometimes I'm 
I'm on vacation or I'm just, I'm in a class or I'm busy doing something. So it, it's not always, but you'll probably see a response from me in about two days. Um, you know what? And I, I find that most people, especially, you know, professionals, that understanding is sort of baked in to the act of messaging asynchronously, right? So I'm, I'm not sure a, I agree. <laughs> I mean, of, of course, there, you know, there are different cases, but I mean, for example, um, customer support, right? If I, if I'm using a product and I need customer support, a lot of these companies are offering like live chat. And this is just a pet peeve of, of mine where it's like, if you're offering live chat, I actually want it to be live. Like if I send a message, I would like a response back like within minutes because you're telling me it's it's a live chat. But in my experience, like I generally don't even want to use live chat. I would much prefer an asynchronous option where I can submit a message or send send a message, send an email, submit a form. And I know that by sending that, like I can move on with my day and I'll expect a, a response within a business day or, or two, yeah. you know, um, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I guess like different clients, uh, handle this differently, but I guess just yeah. the nature of it, it's like, you're, you're not there live face to face. It is asynchronous. Right. So, well, and I, and I think that that's another thing that, um, that a coach or any consultant should be doing with a client when they're going to get engaged with them. Right. It mm -hmm. is starting to set up, you know, um, one, just, what what do we agree upon? Who's really owning what kinds of things? Um, what is our expectation for just sharing information, communication, right? Because like these are these are just some core contracts that help us communicate better. Not they're, they're there to provide just enough boundaries to make it more effective, right? Mm -hmm. um, like this is how we will work together. How we will communicate. Yeah, yeah. So you know when you're doing that, it, it's kind of important because as well, uh, different countries, different regions have to, and cultures have different expectations on that too. And, um, like I'm, uh, it, it's more ad hoc and I think, but, um, I'm, I'm constantly chatting with a person, um, in Japan who's doing coaching out there, right. Uh, for an organization. Mm -hmm. And she's talking about the struggles that she's running into just culturally. Right. And, and, um, and she's more integrated with that culture right, than I am. Uh, but, uh, to hear that, and then, you know, the, at least for us, the nice thing is she'll put out a message sometime in the middle of the night. And if I see it and I have time to respond the next day, I, I will. And if not, at some point, you know, I'll get back to her. And we, we kind of, we know that that time zone difference um, is both an impediment and a benefit, right? Uh, especially if you lean into the asynchronous side of things. Whereas if you're, if it's like, I know we're in the same time zone, we should be responding, you should be there. Um, I, that that's a little bit harder, I think, sometimes to overcome. Got it. 